Hello, welcome to Absolute Beginner Machine Embroidery. I'm your host, Sarah Gallegos, and one of my favorite things to embroider on is jeans. People are a little bit intimidated to embroider on jeans, so let me share with you some of my favorite tips and tricks, and then you'll be able to embellish all of your jeans too. I've been seeing a lot of embroidered clothing in the stores lately, especially on jeans and on pant legs, and it's a lot of fun to play with. And like I said, you just need to know a few little tricks and you'll be ready to stitch on your jeans as well. I've got a few examples here of some embroideries. And you'll see that they're in different placements. So on this particular pair of jeans here, I have butterflies kind of going from the center up both sides of the leg. This is on the left leg of the jeans. And even embroidered these with metallic threads. These are a blend of rayon and metallic threads. Metallic thread can be a little bit trickier to work with, so you wanna make sure that you're using a Microtex or a metallic needle um, when you're stitching and stitch on a slow speed. Generally, when I'm working on a pair of jeans, I have a denim needle in my machine. So for rayons and cottons, that's what you would want to use. But with the metallic threads, you do need a specialty needle for metallic thread just so that it doesn't fray and break on you as you're stitching. So just some things to think about. Slow it down, maybe put your thread on an upright spool pin and make sure that you have the right needle in your machine. And then it's lots of fun to also embellish with heat fix crystals. You've got those little tools that apply heat fix rhinestones and it's a really fun way to embellish your pants. Just make sure that you really stick them on well, let the heat sit for a while so that they don't come off with wear. I've got another pair of jeans here, and on this one, on the embroidery, I did kind of a center medallion right on the side of the leg, and then took it around both sides of the leg so that the little embellishment designs, this particular design CD had a medallion and two side pieces that went along with it, and I just kind of let them meet in the center of the leg. Uh, you can tell that it's a little bit shorter on one side than on the other, so I kind of cut off a little bit of the design right here. But when I'm wearing these jeans, and that's on the inside seam, all the way at my feet, you really don't notice that. So don't be too obsessive. Don't worry too much about making sure that the inside seams match perfectly, because that's really not the focal point, and it's definitely not where people are looking when you're wearing your jeans. So now, on this little pair, this is a little kid's pair of jeans, very sweet, embroidered right up the center of the leg. Now, sometimes you wonder, why do you go up the front of the leg? Why do you go on the side? And I'll tell you the secret to answering that question really has to do with what types of seams are where on the jeans. When you are embroidering on a pair of denim pants or any pants, you have to take out one of the inside or outside seams of the legs. And which seam I take out is going to tell me where I'm going to place my embroidery design. And you always, on a pair of pants, have one side that has a standard flat seam, just a regular seam. And on the other side, you're going to have a flat felled seam. A flat felled seam is the seam that has the double row of top stitching over the seam allowance. And that seam to take out is a bugger. There are a lot of steps involved in a flat felled seam. You stitch it and fold it and stitch it. So to take all of that out and then have to sew it back together again is really a lot of work. So if the flat felled seam is on the inside leg of my pants, I'm going to take out the outside seam. I'm not taking that out. And then I'm going to embroider right up the front of the jeans like I did on these. Now, on this pair, I had a regular standard seam on both the inside and the outside, so it really didn't matter which side I sewed on. So I like the idea of it going up the side of the leg. That's my favorite, that's my preference. So I took out the inside seam and then stitched up the side of the leg there. And on this pair, I definitely had a flat felled seam along the side and a standard seam on the inside. So again, that's what I took out and I just embroidered all the way around the hem. Now, if you've got a really great embroidery machine, you can stitch right through that flat felled seam like I did on these jeans without any problems at all. Just make sure that you've got a really sturdy needle because you're going through a lot of layers of denim. So I'm gonna take these out of the way and show you the easiest way to take out the seams in your jeans. So there we go. Here I have another pair of jeans. Just lay them out flat here. And again, the flat felt seam was on the inside, so I was taking out the outside of my jeans. Now, when I'm taking out the seam, you can work from the outside, but you can't really see the seam as well as you are tearing it out. So I like to turn the denim inside out. 
That just makes the job a little bit easier. It also makes it easier for embroidery. So you can just go ahead and turn them inside out and they'll kind of stay that way until you're done stitching. So here is the seam that I began tearing out. And this was sewn on a serger. So there's the overlock portion of my serger seam and here is the chain stitch portion. So you have a lot of threads to get through. My very favorite tool for this is a seam fix seam ripper. This is my go-to seam ripper, my very, very favorite, because it's got a nice sturdy handle, they're very sharp, and there's a special tool that helps me to take out all the extra threads that you'll find that we have. So I like to just kind of run that seam ripper right underneath of my serger stitching, just like this, and it just takes that right out. And then you can kind of reach inside and place the seam ripper up along where the needles were of that serger stitching. So my first row of stitching here is out, and now I can reveal the chain stitch. This is the part of the stitch that's right up against the right side of the pants. So you really wanna make sure that you don't end up with a hole. So instead of holding your seam ripper with the pointy part inside, you wanna flip it over and make sure that you have that little red ball running along the right side of your garment. That red ball is there for a reason. It's to protect your garment. And so you can just kind of slide it right through. I'm literally sliding it in my fingers and I can feel it and hear it ripping out those seams. So then I can just pull it right open. Now I mentioned that this seam ripper has a little special tool. This is the back side, and the cap has a little honeycomb on it too. And it is specifically designed to pull out those extra threads. Look how easily it takes those right out. So it really is my very favorite seam ripper again because it's so sharp, it's easy to use, and because it helps me to take out those threads really nicely. So once you have taken out your seam, you're ready to stitch. And when you are going to attach this to your hoop, I think it's best to work with your fabric inside out because then when I lay this open like this, I've got a nice flat surface on the right side of my garment. And here you can decide based on the size of design that you're working with, what size hoop you're using, if you want to position the fabric vertically or horizontally on your hoop. Now, of course, you wanna make sure that if you're doing it horizontally, you're gonna take all of your excess fabric and turn it this way so that when you attach the hoop to the machine, all of the excess fabric is gonna be hanging off the side of the machine to the left instead of bunching up inside of the machine. Now you can use a tearaway stabilizer, like a stick tear tearaway, where you just score around the inside, pull off the paper, and then it's sticky. Or you could use a spray adhesive. I've got here the spray adhesive KK2000, and it's a temporary spray adhesive, and this will make my stabilizer sticky. I'm gonna take it away from my machine to spray so it doesn't get all over my machine. Give it a nice coating. A lot of times people take this outside or do it inside of a cardboard box so you don't get that sticky spray all over your sewing room. And then you can lay your denim right on the hoop. Then you can kind of play with the placement of your embroidery designs. We could go along the hem here, we could move up the, the leg, whatever you prefer. And again, just make sure that you've got it stuck down. And working with a heavy fabric like this, the denim, especially with all of this excess here, this weighs a fair amount. So when it's hanging off of the edge of the machine, it's gonna kind of pull at your fabric. Just gravity does its job. So I will always take a couple of pins, even if I'm using a sticky, just to make sure that I don't have to worry about this pulling away from the hoop. There we go. And you can kind of roll up the excess fabric and put a little clamp on it, or um, you could use some of your wonder clips just to hold it in place so it's not flying all around and so that it never un ends up underneath of your hoop. So you'll wanna just kind of pin all around, make sure you've got the appropriate needle, a denim needle in your machine, and then you are ready to stitch. Once you have completed stitching your design, you're gonna take it out of the hoop, make sure you remove any excess stabilizer, and then you need to re-sew the hem. Now, when I took my hem out, I, or excuse me, my side seam out, I also had to take out part of the hem. That way you can stitch it all back together. So you've got to make sure that you unfold all of those pieces of the hem, line it up, and stitch it using your favorite method. If you have a serger, 
you could use your serger to sew a five thread safety stitch. That is what was already in the jeans. When you've got that overlock stitch and also a chain stitch inside of it, that's called a safety stitch. You could use um, a separate overlock stitch and a chain stitch, or you could even just do it on your standard household sewing machine. Whichever sewing machine you have, just make sure that you follow right along where that inside seam line previously was. You can see it. And after you've stitched up your side seam, you're just going to press that hem back under and finish stitching your hem. So a little bit of work to do after you've done all the embroidery, and then you will have a fabulous new pair of jeans to wear. So I hope that you will go out, find a fun pair of jeans to play with, some really fun embroidery designs, and start embellishing and personalizing your own clothes. This episode of Absolute Beginner Machine Embroidery has been brought to you by Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, color your life. Hatch Software, bring embroidery to life. Furniture provided by Koala, fine sewing furniture, custom built in America.